Hello everybody, my name is Kai, welcome back to Warframe. Today, we will be taking a look at the ridiculously strong, and yes, I mean that, ridiculously strong, Tenet Archiplasmor. Here we are in the sim, and while the Tenet Archiplasmor is a very strong weapon, and I'm sure you want to see the build as quick as possible, I think that I should just go over how you obtain this weapon for yourself very quick. To spawn yourself a Sister of Parvos, the best place that I like to do this is to come to Pluto and run the Hydra Capture Mission. This is because there are three tiers of the Granum Void, which you do need to do, which are those like big golden hands with the um, the keys that you get from the treasurers. You go up to those, you do tier three, and this one specifically, the treasurers will always become tier three because it is over level 30. So you complete that. You do need to get more than 25 kills in the tier three, but just use a good frame. If you don't really care about the elements that you get on it, you should because the progenitors are very strong. Then just use Mesa, but if not, use whatever you want. The weapon that your sister spawns with is randomized, but there is bad luck protection, so just run it over and over again until you get the weapon that you like. Once you do, you will spawn yourself a sister. Now, this is not meant to be a tutorial or whatever. Go watch another video for that, but when you do that, you will also be able to check what progenitor element your sister has. Besides the base radiation that the Archiplasmor and the Tenet Archiplasmor come with, progenitor elements are elements that are automatically put onto your weapons that are decided by the frame that you mercy kill your sister with. So that means that because I spawned this sister with my wisp, she has a heat progenitor. All you need to do is just go to Google, whatever you use, and just Google progenitor elements warframe, and you will see what warframes you want to use to get the right elements on your weapons. Generally, the best one of these is toxin because that allows for one mod of viral and corrosive on your weapons, but I go with heat because it scales a lot better on the Archiplasmor. But enough talk about all that, let's discuss the actual Tenet Archiplasmor itself. So the Tenet Archiplasmor is a shotgun, but not just any normal type of pellet shotgun. You will see that when I fire it, it shoots out an absolutely massive, massive projectile. And I mean that because getting headshots with the Archiplasmor is stupid easy. Shooting it real quick at these corrupted heavy gunners, it is just stupid easy to get headshots. But it should be known that because this is technically an AoE, because its projectile is so huge, there is only a 1x headshot multiplier, so getting headshots does not actually give you any more benefit than just getting body shots. It also has a guaranteed impact proc on all enemies that it hits within 29 meters of its original range. And, if you notice, it bounces off walls, which is really cool for tight corridors, like I just hit that enemy and I'm not even aiming at them. But enough about how the gun itself functions, why don't we look at its stats, because, like I say, those kind of make or break weapons in this game. Starting off with an ammo maximum of 40 and an ammo pickup of 15, even though this is an AoE weapon, it is, like, large, you won't really run out of ammo, especially with the magazine being 10 and the fire rate being so low at base at only, where is that, um, one, <laughs> one, literally one you won't run out of ammo with this thing and it is a fantastic weapon now as you can see it it is alarming it is shooting an actual like laser whatever you want to call that has a very very slow reload speed now this is kind of decoupled by the fact that it has a 10 magazine but reload modifications like reload mods and especially primary merciless are fantastic for cutting down that agonizingly long reload speed on the archiplasmor besides that there is a riven disposition of one on this weapon all that means is that it is really hard to find a Riven that is worthwhile on the Archiplasmor. I think that with just how powerful this gun is by itself, there are some Rivens that are worth it to replace some mod slots, but most of the time, you're going to have to shell out a lot of plat for those mods because, again, Riven Disc 12 1, self-explanatory. It does have a semi-automatic trigger and like this very, very useful tooltip here means that you fire one shot per press of the trigger. On the damage side of things, 22% critical chance and 2x multiplier, these are perfectly fine, you can build this weapon for crits. The 34% status chance, on the other hand, is actually really nice. Like I said before, there is that base heat and base radiation. The normal Archiplasmor comes with radiation by default. Obviously, this being a tenant weapon, it also has that progenitor element, that being heat in this case. And with a high status chance, this is really great, especially for radiation. Because other than it affecting our damage from Galvanized Savvy, which we will be using on this build, this means that enemies that are not dead by the first hit of this weapon, which not a surprise, won't happen often, are radiation proct, which means that like the tooltip says, they will start shooting at their allies. The progenitor bonus of heat, on the other hand, is a little bit more confusing in terms of how you acquire this and how you utilize it. All progenitor weapons, specifically being the Kuva and Tenet weapons, have a progenitor amount. This can range from 25% to 60%. I have achieved two of these, and you can fuse them together to increase the percentage to maximize the damage. To fuse your weapons together, come to actions, 
and perform valence fusion to just fuse them into one another. Now, you can accidentally fuse one of your inferior new weapons into the old one, so just make sure that you're always infusing or performing the valence fusion from the weapon that you want to keep. In this case, I grabbed one that was a heat regenerator because in the first place I grabbed toxin and threw it on to this one so that I would get heat and radiation by base. And also, you know, being a shotgun, 1,183.5 base damage is a hell of a lot. This can also go even higher if you get a maxed out progenitor bonus. But moving on now to the actual build, let me show you the first config that I have for you guys today. And here it is. Starting off with our arcane, we are using primary merciless. At max rank, this gives you a total of 360% more base damage at 12 stacks and reload speed. Now, like I said earlier, you can get headshots really easily with the Archiplasmor. Personally... I find the extra reload speed more useful than the headshot multiplier because again it does have that headshot multiplier of one so the addition of the 30 percent off of gal uh, galvanized primary deadhead i think the reload speed is more useful now we are using galvanized hell and savvy galvanized hell more multi-shot and more multi-shot on kill galvanized savvy though other than giving status chance gives us on kill more direct damage per status type affecting the target for 20 seconds stacks up to two Pretty much 80% more base damage. Condition overload for weapons. We are proccing three status effects on pretty much every enemy. And that's not counting the fourth one we will through Hunter Munitions. This mod also works multiplicatively on the Archiplasmor, which is fantastic for increasing our damage by a hell of a lot. As if 7331.9 wasn't already enough. Like I said, critical deceleration, prime ravage for those crit stats. Now, we are using a Bane mod here because this is a viral slash build. We get, we're just going for raw damage because we are using Contagious Spread and Prime Chilling Grasp. Obviously, your damage will be better if you have these mods maxed out. These increase the damage of our slash procs, which are really easy to get because we have Hunter Munitions. So, we have a 30% chance to apply slash on criticals and 66% chance to hit a crit is more than enough. Galvanized Acceleration in your Exilus is really, really great because it increases the range and the amount of times it can bounce off walls and it's just all around good. The only thing that I will say is that the guaranteed impact proc does not extend more than 29 meters for whatever reason. So other than the impact, the slash, and these three stats adding more to our Galvanized Savvy for that multiplicative damage bonus, further than 29 meters, I guess you'd lose one of those. It's kind of rude. Obviously, using a Bane mod really increases the damage of our slash procs because it makes them double dip. This, right now, I'm just using Cleanse Grenier. I'm actually not going to showcase up against Grenier, but I just want to say that this is all around a really great build for the Plasmor. The one thing that I'll say that this doesn't do is give you fire rate. Now, you guys know me. I like to show the weapons as just themselves. And personally, if you are going for a max damage Tenor Arca Plasmor build, I think this is what it looks like. But fire rate is something that it desperately needs at 0.8. I was actually wrong when I said one earlier. It's 0.8 base. So, if we do come to outside frame buffs, looking at our Titania, and we use the Arcane Tempo, Arcane Tempo, at max rank, gives you, on crit, 90% fire rate to shotguns for 12 seconds. The fire rate mod for shotguns gives you 90% fire rate. This will fix every issue that the Plasmor has, because besides all these, the only thing it could possibly need is fire rate. So if you don't plan on using Tempo on your Warframe, swap out your Bane mod for Shotgun Barrage. Feral Momentum is an absolute meme of a mod because it's the same bonus, except it gives you negative damage. I know that they can stack, but still, please change this DE to like 120, 140, whatever. But besides that, dropping the Bane mod isn't that big of a deal because the Archiplasma already does so much damage. It does so much damage that it's really not needed unless you're really trying to scale. Because it just increases the damage of our slash procs even further. But I'm not even using this against Grenier. So let me showcase this on these corrupted heavy gunners. Now this being an arcane and galvanized build, it will take a little while to build up. Obviously you could see that from the very, very lackluster damage at the start. But once it gets those kills up, we will start to do a hell of a lot of damage to these enemies. Those slash packs will definitely kill, and I didn't even get any viral on them. With pretty much max stacks now, we can see it at its full power, and yeah, it, it, it does a lot of damage. It actually does a ridiculous amount of damage. But these viral slash builds 
are for when you're trying to scale really high into endurance because enemies have such a can you face the camera thank you have such a ridiculous amount of armor that you kind of need to get past it with slash because it ignores armor but if we switch up our mods and run for a raw corrosive damage setup using contagious spread and charged shell use the prime version of this if you have it we swap out one of our mods for shotgun barrage since even though we are getting the slash procs you don't really need a bane here it will increase their damage but this is meant to be a sort of first couple hours of steel path where base damage is better than scaling damage from viral and slash the difference between a lot of these builds is that corrosive doesn't take time to kill because it's not a dot so again it being a galvanized build it will take a little while to stack up but once it does you will begin to just one shot enemies Showcasing it a little more, just the damage is absolutely insane. And you get those crit and those slash procs applied. Because sometimes not all your shots will one-tap the enemy themselves. And yeah, you do a hell of a lot of damage to these enemies. Where the Plasmor's power truly lies, though, is the fact that it is a weapon that has lots of body punch through. So, you can shoot through entire crowds like that. And I like to preface again. Not every enemy you meet in the Steel Pass will be a Corrupted Heavy Gunner. A lot of them are actually going to die in just a single shot. So that means, with a big group of enemies, all in one hallway, you just shoot one bullet down and it ricochets off all of the walls. You will kill them all in one shot. It honestly feels a lot better to use in the Steel Path than it does in the Simulacrum. Because again, this is testing against... like. If a Butcher had the health of a Corrupted Heavy Gunner in the first couple hours of Steel Path, builds would be a little bit different. But again, the two builds that we have here are with Corrosive for raw damage, and then Viral Slash for the increased damage on our Slash procs. Now I am using Shotgun Barrage on both of these, but if you want to outsource your fire rate to your frame, just make sure you use Arcane Tempo. Now I like to just showcase the weapons by themselves. No frame buffs. That's why I don't use Arcane Tempo in this gameplay demonstration right here, and I won't when we go into the Steel Path. But... There's just one that I really have to show you guys, and it happens with a frame called Mag. Now, all of you guys can expect a Mag guide soon, but besides that, I just want to show that when you use Mag and Magnetize with the Archiplasmor, no stacks, by the way, but that's just Mag being really good. Let's go jump into the Steel Path on our boy Revenant. And you can see it in some actual gameplay. Here we are in the void in Mott on the Steel Path, my favorite place to test things for you guys. Real quick, just stating that a Panzer Volpophyla is a great companion because any build that has to do with Slash and Viral, the Panzer is your best bet for it. And it's really easy to hit the spores because of the huge projectile that the Tenet Archiplasma offers. But I'm using the Corrosive version here because it just feels a little bit better to use in base Steel Path content. And uh, let's build those stacks up, why don't we? Even with just one, we one shot. Yeah. It's a simple, strong weapon. Ooh, what is that? A 500k impact clock right there? You know, there are actually a lot of frames who are really, really good with this because they can get those instant reloads or quicker reloads, such as Wisp. Garuda with her, what is it, Blood Forge augment, because the reload is a little annoying. But besides that, you can see the clear power that this thing offers. Just does a lot of damage. Like that, that's literally its gimmick. I do damage. The the thing about running those viral slash builds is that they scale a lot better, because the slash procs just do such an insane amount of damage, especially when you use a bane mod and stuff. Now I'm not here, but that's just because I don't really like to run those sort of bane mod type builds, and I find that the Plasmor does just enough damage by itself. I mean, you know, this guy's getting deleted. And if I were to just chill, and let me let me group some enemies, actually. Uh, let's group some enemies. Using Megas Anomaly, and, uh... Yeah, you, you, just, you just plow through crowds. This thing is the literal just, oh, hello. Just one shot everybody. It's very satisfying, too. It's a fun gun to use. The wall bounce mechanic is cool if you can get it to work. I apparently can't. But it does help with its damage because it can't even reflect off surfaces like that and hit enemies multiple times. 
if I, you know, do actually use a frame buff, proc Vor, which is a multiplicative damage bonus, which would be really great, none of these enemies will survive more than one shot. I know that's because Roar is an insane damage buff, but like, again, most people who do use these weapons, you're not going to be going in, sitting on Revenant, and not using your abilities, you know what I mean? So, showcasing a little bit of what that's like, but just a single damage buff ability is absolutely fantastic. And like with most weapons that I showcase or have showcased on this channel, the Archoplasma will easily carry you throughout any content that is not the Steel Path. Its base damage is just so high that you don't even need things like Virus House. I mean, I'm running I'm running Corrosive Heat Radiation right now, and it's doing a hell of a lot of damage. If I was running Viral Slash, sure, they wouldn't be dead instantly, but the damage would scale a lot better. But yeah, like most weapons in the game, to be honest, anything can do you fine on the Steel Path. And with an Acolyte spawning in now, I can show you how it actually does against them. Who is it going to be this time? Angst? Alright. Wonderful. Let's group real quick, and then I'll just shoot into the crowd. And Due to its sort of slow shot nature, it's not the best, but it will kill. That was, that was a decent amount of damage right there. I hit a really, really high damage number, and it just ended up taking out half of his health. Not the best. Still recommend things like the Glaive Prime or whatever, and I, that was very satisfying. But besides that, just all around a really, really great weapon. I wouldn't say it's necessarily easy to obtain, but it's obtainable. Sisters and stuff are not that hard, especially if you do it with some friends. And that is the Tenant Archiplasmor, everyone. This gun is just, like, it's easy to use. It's fun. You get a lot of numbers. It's good. Like, there's really not a lot that you can dislike about this. Sure, does it scale the best out of every weapon in the entire game? No. But does it also give you a really high damage shotgun that is, again, easy to use and also has base radiation, which means that enemies that are hit and don't die won't be shooting at you anyways, which is a form of CC. Like, great weapon. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. The Archiplasma is one of my most used weapons, so clearly I know a little bit about it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. The endless support to my channel has been so, so great. We are on track to hit 3,000 very, very soon. And that's crazy. The road to 10K, everybody. But besides that, again, I hope you enjoyed this one. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. A uh, little side disclaimer. I am live if you are watching this at the time of a release. So come hang out.